Welcome back to another episode of Camp and Camera and our continuing coverage of the third annual DIY Teardrop Campers Community Spring Gathering. This year's event was hosted at the Cumberland Mountain State Park in Tennessee. Had just a wonderful time. If you saw last week's episode, you saw a bunch of cool campers, and today's not going to be any different. Let's jump right into the action with a DIY hybrid from Chris Stewart. All right, so I got to show you this cool camper. I don't like the colors whatsoever. The ivory aluminum with that green accent, I just, yeah, you're right. It's, it looks exactly like my Camp Easy. I think that's just so cool. So who have I got here? I'm Chris Stewart. Chris Stewart. So tell me a little bit about this camper, Chris. Well, I bought it, it was kind of like what you say, a barn find. Yep. And a gentleman, pretty well, just, he said, it. oh, it's not in that bad of shape and all that, of course. And, I didn't know anything about teardrop campers or any type of camper, and so I, well, you made a deal, and I got it, and got it home, and a friend of mine, I said, you know, I think it's got some little bit of water damage back here in the back around it. <laughs> a little bit, a yeah, little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. And uh, that led to the damage is so bad we took it all the way down to the frame. Oh my goodness! And brought it all the way back up. Of course, you used the fenders over, and now so, this started out as is what brand? It was a little guy, <laughs> a little guy. So now listen. This is a DIY uh, get together, but now since he has completely rebuilt this camper, I think you can say you're a DIY or not. I feel like I DIY. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you're a full fledged <laughs> DIY. No, you know, the, use the doors back over, you know, use those over, and of course the frame, yep. and the wheels, and repainted the fenders, and the and thank gosh it, I could use the frame of the hatch back. Oh, over. that's that's good. Yeah. yeah. And then everything else is new. So well, good deal. Right. Look at that camping camera sticker up there. Oh, See, hey, that puts out a lot of light. Uh -huh. I need to put a dimmer on it, I think. But the good thing is you can use it for uh, task lighting or area lighting. That's a good idea. Well, since we're talking about lights, you know, got some lights down in here. I try to put some lights where you can have it. But green it did lights. everything green. I'm telling you, man, I love it. I love the green. <laughs> and it's got, I got green lights under here, you know, what they call oh, yeah. them, rock lights, whatever. So what started out as a factory built camper ended up being a really cool DIY camper. Nice job on that, Chris. Um, now the next camper, really something special. It's the first one like this I've seen. It's a camper with a toilet in it, a teardrop camper with a toilet in it. You're really gonna like this. Okay, so the next camper comes from Ray and Christine Rock. And again, there's been a lot of crowds gathering around this. Um, there is a turret I'm going to call it, sticking up out of this camper. Pretty cool design feature. I'm going to let him explain what's going on here. So Michael, this one is, um, if you look at all of the other campers that are here, this one is a minimalistic project. It was okay. uh, meant intentionally because the vehicle that I'm driving will only pull a thousand pounds. Okay. So I had to build it light. So it was meant to be minimalistic. It is built on an aluminum frame from Northern Tool, Harbor Freight, whichever one of those is. Northern Tool, I think, sells them. Um, there are three things that were unique that I wanted. One was to bring it in under 800 pounds so I could tow it with this vehicle. And I wanted the ability to stand up in it, so I have this turret that I built up on top of it that is a pop top. The middle section of the turret actually comes off and goes in the camper for transportation, and the very top sits down on top to reduce the uh, camper height so that it is the same height as the vehicle for wind load. It's, it is. Um, Half inch marine plywood on the side, quarter inch marine plywood on top, four coats of urethane varnish on it currently. We put a coat on each spring and just expect it to last as long as we want it to last. So wait till you check this out. You're not going to believe what's inside this camper. So what we did that was a little different is we put plywood underneath the, tramp, uh, underneath the frame of the camper as well and then the floor on top <laughs> so that we have storage space between the two levels for all of the miscellaneous Lewis items and it of course allows us to put up set our bedding, set our bedding up. They're built as two individual bunks with a space in between them and the space in between them is such that you have a door that opens up and there's a porta potty available that you can pull out in the middle of the night to use the porta potty. So there to the best do. of my knowledge this is the only pop top that I've run across that has a porta potty built into it. Okay. So we'd have the stand up room plus the porta potty and then when you're done with it of course you just push it in out of the way, close the camp, close the door back up and you're all set. So there you have it. It is possible to put a bathroom inside of a teardrop camper. 
Uh, that's one of the big things that I've always had people ask me about my Camp Easy is where do you go to the bathroom? Well, we have a little booth outside, but he has a bathroom in a teardrop camper. So yeah, I'm gonna say hats off to that. That's a wonderful design feature. So let's take a look at this galley. Again, the galley is, it was meant to be basic uh, with, with a tray to hold the stove, uh, the cooler which we roll, can roll in and roll out for uh, traveling purposes. Uh, the porta potty is accessible from this side to take it out and, and empty it out on a every morning basis. Um, the hatch is very basic. Okay, uh, the, the securing for the hatch is nothing. We put it down and screw it to the frame so it locks in place with captured nuts down there and away it goes. A complete 12 volt and 110 volt system built into it with a battery charger built in underneath. So uh, 12 volt uh, wheelchair battery, uh, deep cycle wheelchair battery is more than enough to keep all the fans and the lights going continuously. What was the build time on this? There's probably 60 to 70 days of build time and it sped over about 90 days of work. So the other times was correcting mistakes and sitting there <laughs> doing design work and thinking about what I was doing right or wrong as a process. I mean, I the, there is an air conditioner built in. Uh, again, marine ply with the cover set up, but you just pop the top off and leave it aside. And you've got an air conditioner that's built to run. So this is a super cool build and that's one of the that's one of the cool things about coming to not just a teardrop gathering but one that's focused on DIY campers because you're going to see so many clever ideas. Never did I think I was going to show up and see one with a bathroom in it and room to stand up. So that is super cool. I really appreciate you showing us this thing. Hey, um, how long how long have you had this built? Uh, I finished it last fall. This is the third trip we've made it. Third trip. And I have gathered so many new ideas from all of the other builders here that I'm tempted to just go back and set this one aside and build another one now. I'm ready to start another there one. There we go. It gets you in your it's blood. It's addictive, guys. Hey, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Appreciate you. Bye. Yes, sir. So what do you do if you want to take the wife to your drop camping and she says you have to have a toilet inside the camper? You put a toilet inside the camper. Pretty cool, right? You did a good job. Um, the next camper is a really cool camper, but it also has a really cool tow vehicle. You're going to like this. So this is a teardrop gathering, but this guy here has been getting a lot of looks on his tow vehicle. Tell me who you are. Edwin Ladd. Edwin Ladd. And what are you pulling this thing with? It's a 30 Model A Ford. 30 Model A Ford. That's pretty cool. Now, there's going to be a lot of motorheads that are probably looking at this thing, wondering what you got under the hood. Or actually, you don't even have a hood on it. <laughs> there's no hood there. No hood on it. So what, what are you powering this okay, thing? Okay, it's a small box Chevrolet. Uh -huh. It's a 383 Stroker. Yep. Has a 671 supercharger and two 750 Hollies. So his teardrop must be like super heavy because uh, he needs a motor that big to pull it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. It struggles. <laughs> yeah, man. So anyway, let, let's take a look at the, uh, the teardrop. I was going to say the tow vehicle, but yeah. let's take a look at the teardrop. So tell me how this whole thing come about. Well, the, the teardrop come about from the car shows. There's okay. a lot of car shows where they allow camping and stuff mm -hmm. and motel bills is being what oh, they are. Yeah, yeah. I built a teardrop behind the car okay now one of the neat things that he showed me about this camper are the fenders on the camper and these are probably not what you think they are but they look pretty cool so tell us about the fenders okay the fenders started life i guess you'd call it as uh utility trailer fenders for a dual axle trailer okay i cut them in half i, I posted it in the group of how i done it okay but uh, i cut them in half and and turned them sideways and made a single fender out of them so in all honesty he actually did add a little bit of metal uh, to bring that curve on around but i'm telling you this is seamless you can't even tell where you did it so you made a good use of some dual axle fenders yeah. you did a good job on that it's a lot cheaper too you know? oh yeah you want to uh, show us inside the tear sure. real yeah. quick yeah. yeah it's kind of modest but it gets me by This wood is like super heavy wood. That's where the big motor in his car comes into. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Now this looks good. Nice, nice, clean, simple design. Matches the tow vehicle well. So anyway, hey, thanks for showing us. Oh, I, no appreciate problem. I appreciate that. That you looks awesome. By. Yes, sir. Okay, so Edwin's camper was nice. His tow vehicle was nice. But what really caught my eye was something that I didn't even show, and that was his central uh, air conditioning system that's outside the camper and is ducted inside the camper. The reason I didn't show it is I plan on building one myself in the near future, uh, borrowing from Edwin's design, and you'll see a lot of it then. So nice job on that, Edwin. Um, talking about helping other people figure things out, 
The next camper is cool, but the owner is even cooler. Let me introduce you to John Miller. So if you hang out on Facebook on the DIY campers uh, community, you're gonna know this is probably one of the most recognizable faces. Now, I'm not saying it's a pretty face, but it's yeah, probably one of the most recognizable. Sure. <laughs> that's for sure. This is one of the most recognizable faces. This is John Miller and his wife Melody's with him. And these are like some of the most helpful people you'll ever run into. They're all the time giving folks, you know, new folks tips on building uh, campers. And this is no hanger queen. This thing gets lots of use. And I want John just to give us a quick sh uh, run through of it. Now it's a, uh, uh, our trailer uh, Maison Petit is uh, five years old now. And uh, we built it in uh, first uh, camping was April of uh, 2015. And we camp every month. Uh, since then, except for April of 2016, when uh, we had uh, I had a heart attack and had okay. heart surgery, and we missed that month. But uh, we got over 30,000 miles on the trailer. 30,000 miles. Yeah, over 30,000 on it. And um, the uh, trailer's five foot wide, ten foot nine inches long, and um, the design and shape was all our own. Um, instead of trying to put a shape, uh, a galley and whatnot inside of a shape, we designed the shape around our galley. That's a good uh, idea. So when anybody thinking about it, decide what you want and then put your shape around it. That way it's easier to uh, accommodate your needs rather than your, your I agree shape. 100%. So, so that's what we did. We run um, as the thing we, uh, we use um, old style Coleman gas stove, um, cooler. 12 volt battery is uh, in the back underneath the drawer. I have a seven and a half gallon water tank that runs on a pump, no sink, but I have the spigot for cooking and uh, right. drinking water. And then the microwave with the 110 12 volt converter uh, and those things to make uh, cooking. Uh, this is kind of the life of the party here anyway, the backside of yep, it. Yep, I hear you. Um, and then so uh, um, this is what a, a used trailer looks like, not uh, all pretty and fancy and, <laughs> and clean. Well, a used trailer is the best trailer because yep. the hangar queens, they don't have any stories to tell. No, so we, we've enjoyed it and um, uh, willing and grateful to help anybody that we can yes, to, you to, are. So, yes, they, you are. so that they can uh, not have the same problems I have. Well, um, I'm gonna speak yeah. on behalf of not only the channel, but for a lot of people who have, have you know, graced the Facebook site. Thank you all for your help. You guys oh, have pleasure. passed along a lot of knowledge. And I'm sure there's a lot of teardrops you're going to pass on the road um, that are possible because of John and Melody Miller. So thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So similar to Chris Stewart at the first of the video, here's another teardrop that began life as a build from another person and got rebuilt by the current owner. So now this camper has a real story and I guess you could say a checkered past. Um, this is Paula Haynes, the owner and kind of sort of the builder, Jay Poor. And what they just told me is this started life uh, as a camper built by somebody else that had some real quality issues. She tore it down to the frame. He framed it back up on the outside and then Paula did the inside. So I guess you could say it took three different people to finally get this camper where it needs to be, but it's got a real good story. And uh, Paula is a very, very active member of the DIY Teardrop Campers community. All right, this was a, actually was an outdoor kitchen uh, for camp, for uh, cookouts at home. It okay. had wheels and it had cabinets underneath and I just tore it all apart and got one of those little things like you did on your camper on the side to hook it to. Okay. And just tore it all apart and used what I could. It's got a nice storage drawer in it. Got water hooked up to it. It'll go nice and strong. That I want to get a, a hose that'll take the gray water just off the side. Can you take a peek in? Yeah. Yes, sir. It's nice and air conditioned in here What right size now. bed is it? It's full size. Full size mm -hmm. bed, okay. Oh, you got storage. Behind here. I'll open that up for you. You guys have knocked this out of the park. So you kind of get an idea. I've still got a little bit to do. There's one piece of ceiling oh, yeah. here we haven't finished yet. Yeah. We've got a little bit more to do on the electric, so we didn't want to close that off till we got all of that done. So you've got a nice awning on the outside that rides on it permanently. Yeah, I love and I that. figured out how to put one on myself. But that, that was great. also from 
several different ones gave me ideas on how to, yep. to do that in the group. Okay. I didn't actually do any of the ideas they gave me, but <laughs> what they showed me helped me figure out with my stores what I could get to make it work. There you so. go. And you've got something that my wife wants so badly is the Climate Right air conditioner. That is a doghouse air conditioner. That's what I hear. <laughs> hey, that's the 2500 models. I understand you yeah, can't really get is. the 2500s. So, yeah, you've got uh, you got a hot item on your hands right there. And it'll heat and cool. So in the well, winter time, if we ever want to camp, we can go out and it'll heat us up too. So a teardrop with a central heat and air unit. Pretty cool. Paula, thank you very much. You're for welcome. You. Appreciate you. Not only are those five more really cool teardrop campers, those are five more of the best people that I've ever met. I walked away with some new friends. Um, hey, before we get out of here, I want to let you know that the good folks at the Halo View Backup Camera Company have sent in a complimentary unit that we're going to do a review on here in a week or two, um, and we're going to be doing a subscriber giveaway, so make sure you check back from that. Next week will be our third and final installment of the coverage of the DIY Teardrop Camp community spring gathering and I'll tell you a little bit more about the giveaway then so until next time take care we'll see you on the road